Welcome to Hushed Voices. I'm your host, Roshni Suparna Devakar. Hi, this is Hushed Voices, an exploration into lesser-known stories from the Indian subcontinent. I'm eager to share with you today's story because it's the tale that inspired me to create Hushed Voices. The story is from a collection called First There Was Woman and Other Stories, written by Maria Strez. Maria is a missionary sister from Slovenia and she has worked for over 30 years with the Dungri Garasia Bheels of Gujarat. Today's story, titled First There Was Woman, was told to Maria by Nanduben Lalaji Ninama of the Dungri Garasia Bheel tribe. She had heard it from her uncle in Kudla village, who was a Bavaji or storyteller. On popular demand, this episode features my appa, A.M. Devakar. I want to mention that I do not own the rights to this tale and all copyright credit goes to Zuban. Without further ado, appa and I give you, first there was woman. A long, long time ago, where today stand the Aravali hills, there was nothing but a huge chasm high and deep and wide, and nothing within it but darkness. But Kudrat was there already. He was there from the beginning, that is, from all time. Kudrat was happy with himself. He lacked nothing and was fulfillment in himself. So the chasm was not really a darkness, even though it seemed thus to human eyes. The presence of God filled the darkness. After many thousand years, Kudrat thought to himself, Let me make someone I can love. Someone very beautiful and desirable. And Kudrat began to fashion woman. He made the woman's bones first. He named it Prithvi, the earth. This is how he went about it. First of all, Kudrat said, Let me make a mountain very high and majestic and let me dress it in the most beautiful way I know. And being Kudrat, he knew he could make it in the most wonderful and unique way. Oh, it was the highest mountain its twin peaks full and rounded, catching the rays of the sun and lit in the pale glow of the moon. Oh yes, it was much higher than the Aravali hills of today. Its valleys and slopes were cool and shady. For many days, he could not take his eyes away from this mountain. So perfectly were the rocks and boulders crafted one into the other. So well proportioned, so attractive. And he was happy with what he had made. Then he thought, Ah, beautiful earth, Prithvi, my woman, let me decorate you. Slowly, one by one, and with much care and tenderness, he planted on earth many trees of teak, of oak and bamboo. Oh, every inch of Prithvi was covered with trees, standing tall and upright on their solid trunks and with branches green with foliage raised to the sky. And in between the trees, Kudrat placed bushes and creepers, moss smooth to touch and pleasant to smell. Here and there, he touched and planted, until finally a thick aranya, a forest like a carpet spread all over the earth, so very thick that no animal or any other being could ever have penetrated it. Of course, at that time, there were no animals or human beings around at all. All this was where the Aravali hills spread today. It was really breathtaking looking at the earth from above. So beautiful did she look. All over were various shades of brown, but over them all like a silken sari in green, enveloping her and swaying in the wind was the dark green aranya which now and then pulled away to reveal quiet valleys where streams of water gurgled or blue-black peaks that soared towards heaven. Nowhere from east to west or from south to north was anything as beautiful as earth, Kudrat's very own creation. And naturally, Kudrat himself fell in love with Prithvi. Every morning he contemplated her as the sun lit her breasts and woke her up. Every night he gazed upon her, pale and silvery in the moonlight. Now and then he would add a touch here and there, another beautiful shape, like the slope on her belly which raced down amid the thick, undergrowth to a secret cave which hid a warm spring of living water. And as Kudrat gazed upon Prithvi, he loved her even more. And in turn, she grew even more beautiful and strong and desirable. 
Now, Prithvi lived with the power of Kudrat. And with this power, she increased and multiplied the living plant life, which was her body. There were thick, very thick jungles. And within them were teak and bamboo. And in the middle of the forest was a huge banyan tree. Oh, what a huge tree it was, with as many branches as it had roots, so that one did not know where it began and where it ended. In fact, it was a whole grove which spread across the forest and through its foliage, the sun made a lovely pattern of light on the forest floor. Till now, the forest was made only of trees. And Kudrat said to himself, Let's make all kinds of animals and birds as well. And he placed them there to amuse Prithvi and keep her happy. There was the lion who roared and made all the animals shiver with fear. But when they went close to him, his stinking breath threw them off. There was the jackal whose eyes shone in the night like two burning pieces of kolsa. There were wild boars too, always in packs, licking their young ones clean. There was the cheetah rolling on the ground, coughing and cleaning his paws. There was the camel who towered above them all and looked down at others. And there were rabbits scratching their long ears and deer jumping gracefully over the silvery brooks. On the jungle floor, under the thick bushes, snakes slithered, chasing rats and frogs for their meal, while above them monkeys jumped from the banyan to the teak trees. They plucked timbura from ebony trees and threw them down for others to eat. But nobody took offence, ever, as they all lived in great harmony. And there were birds too, of all kinds, but the most beautiful of them all was the peacock. He strutted out from behind the banyan, Oh, he was a deep blue and gold, his tail a shimmering green with the eyes of the sun king's daughter, Surya. Actually, they were her teardrops, surrounded by a ring of tiny black circles. And the peacock fanned out his long tail in a wide arc and strode majestically, looking very much the king he was. And there were other birds too. The lofty eagle, the clever crow, the homely sparrow, the talkative parrots who chattered non-stop as they flew from tree to tree. All of them were happy to belong to the forest, which they had considered their true home. As he gazed upon his creation, his Prithvi, Kudrat saw how good and harmonious it was. And smitten by love for what he had made, he started dancing. He danced to the sound of the gurgling waters, to the whistle of the winds in the trees, and to the call of the wild birds and beasts. And Prithvi herself swayed to the rhythm of his steps. So very pleased was he that Kudrat said to himself, Let's go on fashioning the world and make it something very special, for it is my wife and she grows bigger every day. And so he did. Soon there were colourful butterflies and bees humming around the flowers and every other kind of insect, from the most beautiful glowworm to the dirty bug, from the noisy dragonfly to the pesky mosquito. Everything was in harmony and everything was good. So did Kudrat fashion his wife's bones, the earth. Finally, one night, on the eve of the Amli Melo, when the whole forest was silent and bathed in the light of the silvery moon, Kudrat took some soil into his hands, weighed it carefully and shaped a murti, an image. So although there were birds and beasts and flowers before, this was the first living human being, the most beautiful shape Kudrat could think of. And it was a woman. Yes, the Murti was complete and perfect. Kudrat placed her in the jungle for all the animals to see and admire. He himself stayed on to gaze at her, and with each passing moment, his desire for her grew. Oh, he could hardly move his eyes from her as he watched over her day and night. What name shall I give her? He mused, and finally decided. I will call her Sati, because that is what she is. Whole, intact, perfect. And so Sati lived all by herself in the jungle. Every morning the dewdrops on each leaf looked like necklaces of pearls and every tree and patch of grass shimmered in the morning sunlight. She stood on tiptoe and embraced the trees and the soft dewdrops sprinkled her and moistened her face, her palms and all her skin. During the day she plucked delicious mangoes and bananas, boras and timburas off the trees and bathed in the cool waters of jungle streams. During the night, she would watch the moon, waxing or waning, and sleep in the leaves of the sarg trees. And even before daybreak, she would be awakened by the twittering of the birds, and soon she had learnt exactly which bird had what kind of song. 
and during the day she watched the animals at the water holes and played with the deer that came to refresh themselves. Oh, it was such a joy to live in that jungle paradise. But one day, she realized suddenly that she was all alone. True, there were trees and birds and insects of all kinds, and many kinds of animals moved among the trees and followed her wherever she went. But there was none like her, none to talk to her. There's no one like me whom I can talk to, she thought to herself. There's no one quite like me. She started worrying and felt very sad. And every day the sadness grew. Sati began to feel very lonely. Kudrat could not bear her sadness. He wondered what he could do to remove her loneliness and finally thought out a plan. One day he put a sapsi, a serpent, into the forest. From day to day the snake grew bigger and bigger. Upon seeing this, Sati thought, I need to give birth to someone who will be like myself. He will talk to me and keep me company. Yes, I need someone of my own who is part of me. And the woman seized the serpent and embraced it. And the serpent coiled itself around the woman and entered into her and filled her. And the woman conceived through the serpent power, which is, after all, the energy of Kudrat himself. Nine months and nine days later, Sati gave birth to a son. Oh, how very like me he is, she cried, the woman with delight, as she embraced the young being. And Kudrat approached and hugged her and cut the umbilical cord with a knife and helped the woman wrap the child with the leaves of the teak tree. The drops of blood that fell during the delivery became the kesuda flowers, while the cord and whatever was thrown away evolved into teak leaves. Sati was very happy looking at her son and she nursed him and spoke to him and helped him grow tall and sturdy. It was given to her by Kudrat, with whom she became one. So this is how man came into the world. He came to be because woman wanted it so, and because Kudrat loved her so. And Kudrat loved her so that now he became one with her. And she must never forget that first it was a woman's kingdom. That was First There Was Woman. Thanks to Appa for helping me give voice to Kudrat. If you enjoyed the story, please share and subscribe to the channel. Hushed Voices is on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for listening.